just going to turn over to Psalm 85 tonight, Psalm 85, but we're not going to study this psalm verse by verse. Uh, I just want to read it and then go to our Lord in prayer. Psalm 85. <coughs> o Lord, or our Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of the people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again? Thy people may rejoice in thee. <clears throat> Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people, to his saints. Let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before Him, and shall set us in the way of His steps. Let us look to our Lord in a word of prayer. <clears throat> our most gracious Heavenly Father, again we thank You for Your love to us mercy and grace and watch carry over us. I thank your Father for allowing us the privilege of coming into the house of the Lord for each and every one that is here tonight. Father, we do want to pray for those that have been made known to the church and have already been prayed for. We think of Kathy tonight and pray, Father, that you would uh, give the doctors wisdom as they make the decisions for her and heal her. I ask, Father, that you would be with my mother-in-law, that you would uh, bless and heal and comfort her. Um, be with Heather and Nikki as they take care of their moms tonight. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with uh, the one brother Matt mentioned, Matt Smith, and, and what's going on with uh, their, their uh, pregnancy, and uh, Lord, that you would intervene there. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just give us all that, all, and there's so many more prayer requests, Lord, and, and I'm thankful thou knowest the needs, and most have been prayed for. And <coughs> Heavenly Father, I pray that you would open up our hearts, ears, and minds tonight, that we would be open and receptive to thy word, that we would leave here uh, saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. I, I, it has already. I've enjoyed the singing and enjoyed the praying and the fellowship and thankful, Father, for all of this. And we know that um, because of your Son, the Lord Jesus, we have these wonderful opportunities to worship and to serve you. I ask, Father, that you would forgive us again of our sins. May thy will be done in these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Tonight, give you some thoughts on revival, right? So we're not having a traditional revival meeting, and I've done this before, a fellowship meeting before. This is nothing new to you all. Um, hopefully, maybe some of the thoughts will be, and maybe some of the things the Lord's laid on my mind now uh, might be a little bit different. Um, especially again, as I went into the uh, Matthew uh, chapter, I knew. Tonight just wasn't the night. So we get ready for these meetings. And really, this one feels like it's been long, right? So we go uh, October, end of September, early October. That's when our last meeting was. That's our big meeting. <coughs> now, Lord willing, we'll have um, our spring fellowship. It is spring out there. And uh, Lord willing, we'll uh, just be able to enjoy meeting on an off day. And then uh, coming back on the Lord's Day. So why talk about revival, though? All right, so why talk about revival at a time when it's only two preachers that are coming and then the pastor on the next Lord's Day? And so what certainly can happen between now and then? What, what excitement can there be uh, for revival between now and then? And uh, again, I know, I know it's not a revival meeting, but I want to give you some thoughts on revival. Maybe we haven't thought about the term for a little while. Um, certainly... You know, if we were really going into Psalm 85 here, we could see um, that the psalmist was <coughs> absolutely crying out um, for mercy and uh, just turning to God. And, and, and 
and asking God to turn them, right? Turn us, O God, of our salvation and cause thine anger toward us to cease. God, we are asking for you to change us from our current ways. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Now, the key word there is that thy people may rejoice in thee. And so one of the first things that I think I, I like to establish when I start talking about revival is that revival is designed for God's people. All right, we think that revivals are always all about the evangelists coming in and preaching salvation to the lost. Now, that's a wonderful fruit of revival. And certainly, we want to pray that God would bless in the messages Saturday and the messages the Lord may have me to bring on Sunday, that God's message of salvation will come through. Amen. We pray that God would allow us to hear the saving message of Jesus Christ. But the key that we see here in Psalm 85, and we're going to turn to some more scripture references is that the psalmist was crying out to God to change them and to revive his people. Beloved, it's about God's people being revived. It's about God's people getting their mind ready to go out and to do that which God has called us to do. So let's do as Brother Allen prays. Let's Pray that God would fill this house on Saturday, amen, that God's people and the, even the lawns of the community would be willing and wanting to come and hear, thus saith the Lord, right? Now, as God begins to work with us, will that revive us again? I'll say this now because it's on my mind and I'll say it later and I've said it before. Brother Ross and Brother Long and Brother Meyer are not bringing revival. You understand what I mean by that? If you don't, it is not a secret formula that him and I or any other of us preachers have that we're able just to systematically say one plus one divided by, you can't really divide after one plus one. Yeah, you can't you divide by back one. Anyway, and you have revival. Beloved, we must understand that it is God Almighty that sends revival to his people. And it is our responsibility to prepare our heart, our mind, and our affections to be revived. It is our intention to be revived. It is our intention that God would use His Word, convict us, and change us to be more like Christ. That's what we need. <clears throat> we must pray that God would be pleased to use these men to bring revival. The lost come, God places on the heart of the speaker to preach salvation, praise God. If God allows these visitors to continue to come and they come in on the Lord's Day, guess what? That's the pastor's duty. I need to preach Christ and that's going to be part of the message too. And tell them their need of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ pastor it's responsibility to declare all the counsel of God but the pastor must not forget his duty you know uh, one of the uh, brother Paul Jackson would say to his members you bring him in and I'll, I will preach to him right praise God if while they are here God stirs the hearts of the lost and people are saved we appreciate and we thank the Lord for that <clears throat> but evangelism as I started off is not that which to where the word revival refers. God sends it to his people. Show us, again, will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee, that thy people will again be glad in serving the Lord again. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. So we're needing to be revived. I will hear God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. And the Lord speaks through his messengers, and he speaks to his people, right? Mercy, truth met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth, 
shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Don't you love the descriptive words of God's word? <clears throat> you know, your you know, truth shall spring out of the earth. That, that, that just gives you this, this picture in your mind of something just coming forth, right? And budding forth and just having this, this dramatic type entrance to it spring forth out of your truth. We pray that God's messengers would preach to us truth. We pray that God's preachers, God's pastors, preach to us truth. And that the Lord will give that which is good. May God revive us. In revival, God does a fresh work in those who have life. Didn't David pray and ask the Lord to what? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. David sinned before the Lord's great, grievous sin. <clears throat> David went out of fellowship with the Lord for a while. And David prayed and asked God to restore unto him the joy of the salvation. And this psalmist here is asking and saying, Lord, turn us from our wicked ways. Revive us. Change us. Change us. Look at some of these other verses I have here. Um, Psalm 119, verse 156. <clears throat> Psalm 119, 156 says, Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. I love that. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. It says, in Psalm 119, 37, Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Quicken thou me in thy way. Turn me from the things that are wrong in my life. Turn me from the sin that is in my life. Lord, I am praying that you would be with me, and turn me, and mold me, and keep me from the ways that I'm currently in to be more like you. I have no idea Brother Ross and Brother Long will be preaching. You all know me well enough to know that whenever a preacher comes, I have one requirement, and that is that they preach from the King James Bible. That is my requirement. Well, certainly I, I, I'm going to know about them. I'm going to know what they believe. But you understand, I don't assign them subjects. Many of them ask me, many of them ask me, they say, what do you want us to preach on? What does the church need right now? And I say, the church needs exactly what God gives you for us. That's what we need. So I don't know what they're going to bring. I don't know the message. But I know that we need to prepare our hearts for that message. That God, we pray to God that the messages will be used to turn us to be more like Him. <clears throat> God's people need revival. God's people need to be revived. I've, I've mentioned these before, and I, I do have them in here again tonight. Packer, the author, his name is Packer, he lists five marks of revival. First of all, we need an awareness of God's presence. Many times have I stood up behind the pulpit and I've just prayed and ask, and I preach, and I've asked that God would just fill us with His presence, that we would experience the presence of Almighty God, that this place would be full in the praise and the worship of God. Beloved, we need to be aware of God's presence in this church, in our lives, and everywhere that we are at. If we are aware of God's presence, well, I'll tell you what. You start thinking about some of the sins in our lives, you start thinking about some of the things that we do, I think that if we were more aware of God's presence in our lives, we'd be less likely to do some of the sins that we do, but we forget. We get caught up in the sin. We need awareness of God's presence. The second thing we need is responsiveness to God's Word. I've been talking about that a lot. You know, it says over there in the book of James, <coughs> it says in the, in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22, But be ye do 
doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his now James was writing to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. James was a very early New Testament writer. Comes later in the New Testament, but James was a very early New Testament writer. And these folks now, <coughs> upon the time of the writing of James, our Lord has been crucified, our Lord has risen again. The work of the apostles, the work of the disciples is continuing. That's why there's, you know, they're, they're scattered abroad. James, a loving pastor, writes to them. He admonishes them to hear the word and to do it. He goes on and he, and he tells them that we are, we are not just to look into the law of liberty. We could say not into the, the perfect law of God, the word of God, and continue it. In the way that we were, being a forgetful hearer, hearer, but a doer. And God is so good to us that He blesses us when we obey His Word. It's just fantastic. Right? We've already been saved by His marvelous grace, and we've been promised eternity with the Lord in heaven forever when we've been saved by His grace. And then He says... Do my work, and you will be blessed. You're thinking, how can I be more blessed than being saved? God says we are. <laughs> he says we will be. So, it's really exciting. So, so yeah, we, we need that um, responsiveness to God's Word. We need to, we need to hear the Word of God. And that, it certainly doesn't just go on Saturday. It certainly just doesn't happen on a Wednesday or on a Sunday. But when the Word of God is preached, then we respond to God's Word. You know, I talk about... You know, uh, the, the sin, and I talk about the country, and I talk about, you know, people's disregard for God. Beloved, people need to see the Lord Jesus in us. We are to be the reflective light of Jesus Christ the Lord. We are to show forth the light of Jesus Christ. Brother Terry, oftentimes, <clears throat> in his Thanksgiving devotion turns to that psalm <laughs> that I can never remember whenever I reference it. 94. This time it is, it's 94? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read it. And this psalm talks about not being ashamed. It talks about not being ashamed to stand up for the Word of God and for God Almighty. Um, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm there, uh, Psalm 94, thank you, glad you always remember it, there it is, who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity, unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, my foot slippeth thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. <clears throat> We're asked this very serious question, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Would you agree with me tonight? There are some people doing some evil work. <laughs> I think you would. Who's going to speak for me? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? We're going to be like Isaiah and say, here am I, Lord, send me. When we hear the messages that convict us, are we willing to ask God to change us, to mold us, to make us more like him that we can rise up? Well, that's what I'm praying for. So, all right, Brother Terry, I won't take it any further than that. I don't want to take it away from you or anything like that. So, no, I'm just kidding. 
Amen. <laughs> so that third mark, been dancing around this one all night, is a sensitivity to sin. We are not sensitive to sin. We are inundated with sin and lust and whatever else you can think of. <clears throat> that what we know to be wrong, <clears throat> it's called right. What we know to be of an abomination is called nothing more than an alternate lifestyle. Right? We got people confused about all kinds of things in this world. Lost some sensitivity to sin. I pray God would make us sensitive. Four. Liveliness and community. Beloved, I believe a revived church is a church full of life, joy, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Both David and the psalmist that I read in Psalm 85 and verse 6 prayed for joy to be restored. One thing that I, I, I really appreciate about Grace Baptist Church, people don't come and visit with us and say later, or at least I've never heard it, boy, that was a grumpy bunch, right? But let us not rest in that. Let us always desire to be alive at a lighthouse in this community. <coughs> and then finally, number five, well not finally, I have more. Number five, faithful, faithfulness in our testimony. May we be faithful in doing what God calls us to do. Spurgeon writes, and I quote <coughs> as he described the kind of revival he wanted to see. It says, We need a work of the Holy Spirit of the supernatural kind, putting power into the preaching of the Word, inspiring all believers with heavenly energy and solemnly affecting the hearts of the careless so that they turn to God and live. We would not be drunk with wine of carnal excitement, but we would be filled with the Spirit. We would behold the fire descending from heaven in answer to the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man. Can we not entreat the Lord our God to make bare His holy arm in the eyes of all His people in this day of declination and vanity? really like that quote, that saying, that we would ask God <coughs> that the Word would be empowered, inspiring all believers with heavenly energy, affecting the hearts of the careless, that we would be filled with the Spirit. I talked about this at the beginning of the message. We'll say, is there a formula for revival? You know, we're, we're seeing where we're, it is God's people, right? That thy people, as we read. A lot of people turn to 2 Chronicles 7.14 when talking about revival, and certainly it is a very good verse. Listen to it here. <coughs> Listen to what it says. If my people, Amen? You getting it? Talking about God's people. God's talking to us tonight. If my people. He's not looking to the drunkard. He's not looking to the sinner. We pray that God saves the drunkard. We pray that God saves the sinner. But God is looking to His people. If my people, if my people, which are called by my name. So that gets real specific. <laughs> my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Man, that talks all about repentance. 
if my people, so we're talking about God's people, are willing to get on their face before me and humble themselves and pray and ask God to forgive them of their sins, myself included, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin <coughs> and heal their land. God's people to humble themselves, to pray, to seek God's face and repent. We pray for revival. We pray not just again for this weekend, but every time we come into the house of the Lord, beloved, that we'd be revived. What we need, what Mount Vernon needs, what all the communities around us need is what they need the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, whether the revivalist or whether the preacher or whether the pastor is preaching about home life, sin, whether they're talking about how to uh, be a light of the Lord Jesus Christ, or whether they're talking about salvation, every message must center around Jesus Christ the Lord. That's what we need. The Lord Jesus is being shut out of every every. Everything. We as God's people and we as a lighthouse in this community need to preach Christ. Look at this wonderful verse. I'm almost through. <clears throat> it's over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's just, it's just, ah. Verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Like Spurgeon, like any other pastor, like any other preacher, I am praying that God would show us His power through the preaching of His Word. You know, here's Paul, who is very able... I believe a very able orator of God's Word. Very strong in doctrine. <clears throat> Did incredible work for the Lord. He comes to the Corinthians and he says to the Corinthians, I came not to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom. And I believe that Paul was very wise though. He probably uses words very well. But he says, I... I didn't do any of that, but I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and crucified. So all the things that Paul teaches, if it doesn't go back to the Lord Jesus Christ or start with or however you want to say it, and it's not worth teaching at all. <laughs> it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ, folks. That's what we need in our church. That's what we need in our homes. That's what we need in our community. It's what we need in our state. It's what we need in our country. Power of God from the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm not going to hide it. It would be outstanding to see souls saved. And families reunited. And all the things I talked about that can come from revival. But beloved, it must start with us. It's Wednesday. We have, we have, as a church, we've been praying for this meeting since when? Probably since the last meeting. But once we voted on it in January, I can't remember in my mind a service that has gone by. Maybe there has, I don't know. But not very many that have gone by that a, a brother at some point in the service has not prayed for the fellowship meeting and that God would use the messengers that come. You know how awesome that is for a pastor? To hear his people praying? That God would bless the messages? It's fantastic. Because you acknowledge that all of it comes from God. Not from the man. 
<laughs> and that's what Paul was teaching us here. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Who's going to stand up for me against the evildoers? Against those workers of iniquity? It starts with us. Pray that God would send revival. Pray that God would prepare our hearts to be open and ready to receive. I pray that probably in every prayer before I preach, that God would open up our hearts, ears, and minds to be open and receptive to His Word. That goes back to the responsiveness of God's Word. I'm praying that God would allow us, even for the short time that He allows me to preach, that our minds would be clear and that we would be open and receptive to what God has for us. And that's what I'm praying. That's what I'm praying. <clears throat> Christ-centered, God-honoring power from above preaching. May God be pleased to revive us again. May God use His Word and add the blessing to it. Thank you for your attention to the Word of God. Stand together and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer.